The new transdisciplinary field of inquiry called revivalistics includes revival linguistics, which is very different from the already established branch of linguistics called documentary linguistics. How different is revival linguistics from documentary linguistics? Some documentary linguists only care about writing down the language at stake, its grammar, its lexicon, vocabulary. Revivalistics, on the other hand, puts the native speakers rather than the language at the very center. Revivalists ought to work with a community. Their work is much more than a laboratory endeavor that analyzes a suffix or a syntactic constituent order. To, uh, on the tree bridge, uh, the ship, uh, the ferry that was uh, running between Port Lincoln and Adelaide, they put us on the on the boat that uh, that afternoon, and uh, we travelled to Kangaroo Island, then to Adelaide. And when you arrived in Adelaide, uh, what happened then? Uh, where did they send you, and uh, were you with your brothers or? Well, when. We came to Adelaide, um, we were, um, well, we were all in shock because we were coming to a strange place. We didn't, uh, first time we ever been into the city, first time we ever been on a boat, the first time we ever been to Kangaroo Island and uh, first time to Adelaide and seen all the lights and the uh, high buildings, skyscrapers. And uh, we were just uh, in shock and um, and then they uh, went through the courts uh, in Adelaide, King William Street. Then they sent us to Windana, Remandome, for, uh, for about a month. Um, and uh, when we came to Windana, then that's when they separated us again. Uh, we just sort of had no choice but to uh, fit into what was uh, done at that, at that time, yeah. Right. Were you exposed to any Aboriginal uh, speech uh, when you were in Adelaide in this institute? Parents and that, and uh, grandparents would speak to us in, uh, in some languages, and uh, we do understand that. But when we went into, into the routine of the uh, yeah, I mean, you just do, did what you were told, uh, whether it be yes or no, sir, and um, and uh, you was expected to do it. If you uh, didn't uh, conform to the rules of the uh, of the institution or uh, the remand home, uh, you were given certain punishments, um, and you had to do some exercises and things like that, just to uh, uh, as part of the discipline. One of the things that, um, that um, before, before I got taken away, my auntie said to me at the, at the courthouse, and she shook me up and grabbed my shoulders and looked me in the eye and said, um, and, and said to me, said, tell them who they are and where they come from. Tell them not to forget us and don't get fostered out or don't get adopted out because you will never ever see us again. So, to sum up, a revivalist cannot be an armchair linguist who sits at home and analyzes language. A revivalist cannot be a veranda linguist who observes the natives without engaging them. A revivalist cannot be a caravan linguist who interrogates a native speaker in a caravan until the native speaker faints out of exhaustion and then the linguist brings the next native speaker in the line. A revivalist must be a community field linguist. The goals and the extent of a language revival can be very varied in the first place. For example, a community may desire to only reach a post-vernacular phase in which people know several dozens of keywords in their traditional language. In the case of Maori, in Aotearoa, New Zealand, for example. It can be lexical items that are not easy to translate, such as whakapapa, genealogy, heritage, or whanau, extended family. 
Other communities may wish to change the linguistic landscape, LL, landscape, of their town. Say, official signs in Port Lincoln should be not only in English, but also in the traditional regional language, the Bangala Aboriginal tongue. Others might want to have funerals and other rituals in language. And there might be communities who may aspire to go the full Monty all the way. In other words, just like in the case of Hebrew, they might want to have their grandchildren speaking the reclaimed language natively. It is for the indigenous people, not for the linguist, to decide. In fact, the advantages of a language revival movement go far beyond the actual native speech results. From the point of view of indigenous empowerment and well-being, it is not the case that if at the end, if any, of the revival process there is no all-encompassing native-speaking communities that converse in the revived language in all semantic domains, then it will automatically imply that the revival was a failure. The revival process is as important as the revival goals. The reward is in the journey.